All right, so this this is my third video, and there's three different ways to do this. This is probably the most traditional way that I have always done a normal distribution work and with the problem, the normal distribution table. So I would say that this is the one I would go with. So this is going to be using negative infinity to positive Z. So let's just like make sense of what's being said. So um, got my pen, got red. Just one more review. We know that the normal distribution. Let's see, there we go. Our, if someone tells us our distribution is normal, then we can look at this. We know that this would be our negative Z scores over here. This is our positive Z scores here. Going down the middle, would that be a Z score of zero? That if you have a Z score of zero, you are the mean, right? So you you your data value is on the mean if your standard deviation is zero. Remember, standard deviation measures the relationship that your data value has with the mean. So when we look at this case right here, since that what we were given, we have an area to the right of 0.11. That means that we are sitting up here and we have an area up here of 0.11. So we're trying to find the Z score that would go with that. So that would tell us how many standard deviations we are above the mean. That's what a Z score is, is how many standard deviations you are away from the mean. So we go and take a look at this table. The table we're looking at today on this video is going to be from negative infinity to positive Z. So that means that they want, they're going to help us using this table. We're going to look at from negative Z to whatever Z score I could even do. If I had a, a Z score here, I could calculate also, but we're kind of, you'll notice this table is actually skipping right to 50%. So right here, if you had a Z score of zero, you're at 50% because they're saying that you've already gone this distance. If you have a z-score of zero, you've already gone 50% of the graph. So then you'll notice all of these data values are just adding on. All right, so that's kind of helping you under understand this table. Here's the next thing to this. If we know that a normal distribution is 100% of the area, well, we think about one as representing 100%. So this being one whole unit. So this distribution is one whole unit or 100%. We've already used 0.11 or 11%. So if we take away 11% or we take away 0.11, what we get is 0.89 or 89%. And so what we're going to look at in the table is we're going to look for an area of 0.89. So we're going to look for this area or a number that's the closest. I misspoke in my other video. It's not less. It's the closest. So we're going to choose. So we're looking for the closest area to 0 0.89. So 0 0.85, 0 0.87, 0 0.89. Okay, there we go. But that's 0 0.8925. So that's 25 thousandths um, more. Okay, there's 0.8907, so that's seven ten thousandths away, and then we have 0.88. So let's think about that for a second. So if we did point, let me get my pencil back. If we did 0.8907 minus 0.89, and we subtract those, um, this is zero zero, so that's 0, .0 my bad. Oops, sorry about that. It's exactly like that decimal is not there. That's zero, 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 seven. So that's the shock from those two. Let's do, so I was using 0.89. Now let's use 0.888. So we would do 0.89 minus 0.8888. So I'm not going to, I'm going to use my calculator instead of doing all the borrowing. And so we would do 0.89 minus 0.8888, and we come out to be 0.0012. So remember, we're going to choose the one that's the smallest amount. So this one is 7 ten thousandths. So we're going to use 0.8907. So then we run across, and we find out that we get a z-score of 1.2, and we run up to get our second decimal place, 3. So um, whether we're using this table or whether we're using, um, if I go back and I use, you know, the previous table and we're looking at, sorry, let me do that. Sorry about that. Um, 
So yeah, so there we go. That's to me, this is the best way to be able to apply this because what we just found out is we found out that we take all of that area and that gives us that this distance, the area right there is 89%, 80 point percent of the entire thing and then we have 0.11 right there so we find the corresponding z score of that spot and we find out that z score is z is equal to 1.23 so whatever whatever my data value is that data value is 1.23 standard deviations above the mean now one last thing i want to say to you is is that don't get caught up thinking about the empirical rule i did not draw this picture to scale so if you go back and you think about one last thing to think about here is if you imply the empirical rule so i'm just making a comparison between chapter three and chapter six in the empirical rule remember that if you are if this is your mean and you go one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below then that data right there represents um let's put the bell curve on there then that data right there represents 68%, right? And then if you go two standard deviations, so negative two and positive two, then that distance represents 95% of your data. And if you go three standard deviations, so negative three to positive three, then that represents 99.7. So if you're, so in our particular case, I didn't draw this to scale. So like this right here is not drawn to scale and so um, don't be like, oh, wait, it doesn't make any sense. He put the tail all the way like over here and then it came out to be 89%. But two standard deviations is 95. So that's just, that's just me not drawing my picture to scale. All right, hopefully this helps. Please reach out if you have more questions.